guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. Today we are going to be taking a look at the new Viltrox 85mm lens for the RF mount. And what's really exciting about that is that RF glass, I don't know if you know this about the Canon ecosystem, RF glass is just ridiculously expensive uh, unless you're kind of getting the lower tier stuff. So this is kind of an exciting lens because this goes for just $500 Canadian and uh, it gives us the potential for what might be coming out kind of from the other brands uh, to support the RF system. So I'm excited to test this out with you guys. I have done a bunch of shooting with it already, so I've got some thoughts that I want to share with you guys on the good things and some of the bad things that I'm not super stoked on with this lens. But then you get to take this information and do other research and decide if this lens is right for you. So we've got the Canon R5 today we'll be shooting with which is one of the best cameras on the market right now in my opinion this thing is just a freaking beauty so we'll be slapping the 85 mil on here and we'll be doing some point of view shooting around the car so I found a little bit of a cool location the Canon R5 has a 50 megapixel kind of sensor on it so I think it'll give us a good idea of the sharpness and image quality that we can get out of this lens. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this here, but the glass is actually seemingly really good quality. We get an aperture of 1.8, so this thing gets pretty bright and lets a lot of light in. And one thing that's really cool is that it's actually a really good build quality. It seems like it's made of like metal or something really nice, and it's still really lightweight. And the focus puller, which I'm not sure if we really use that much these days, is super smooth. But I think most of us these days are going to be using autofocus on our cameras. So it's more about how well this lens communicates with the Canon R5. So with any car photography, you generally want to be using a CPL filter. So I'm going to be using the one from Freewell, which is, in my opinion, one of the best ones out on the market. Um, these have a 72 millimeter diameter. So uh, I've got an 82 mil and I'm just going to use the newer step up rings to slide that on there and then we've got a sweet sweet CPL and one thing that's really cool about this kit which if you haven't seen the video yet I think it's up there somewhere driving Porsches on mountains showing off these but they're magnetic which is like super cool super easy to use and they stick on there pretty good they've got some like good ridges on it but anyway we're going to toss the GoPro on and do some shooting. All right, so we're rigged up here with the GoPro so you guys can follow along here. But one thing you gotta give me a little bit of grace on is that the car is, is decently <laughs> dirty because here in Calgary, we get these crazy Chinooks. It's actually pretty warm. Fortunately, it's like one degree Celsius. So it's, it's decently warm given that it's January. If I had to wait for a perfectly clean car to do any vlogs, you guys would, you wouldn't get any vlogs during during the winter. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but one of the things that I love the most about the Canon R5 is that it has vehicle detection. When they made that update, it was so, so sweet. So let's see how well the 85 mil works. With vehicle detection, it looks like it's picking it up great. We're just gonna make sure we get our exposure locked in here. Now the crazy thing is, look how far away you have to get from the vehicle to get this thing in, in fully in the frame. Spin our CPL around, cut out the right reflections. That looks good there. When you're shooting with an 85 mil and you wanna shoot for Instagram, portrait mode specifically, you have to be quite a ways back to get that car in the whole frame, so that's something to note. So it's pulling, catching focus pretty good. I guess we'll see in post how well, this sh how sharp it is. And even for this, I guess I want to even go a bit farther back because when you're posting to Instagram stories, you need that to be kind of as wide as possible so it doesn't get anything cut off. But it's pulling focus quite well. I don't know if you guys can see this, pulling focus quite well on the car. balling really just feeling the frame of the car all right let's go in and grab some details do like a wheel wheel Wednesday kind of shot 
and that's another great thing about the R5 is just tap to focus it locks on absolutely love it See if we can get wide enough. And if we can, yes we can, then uh, we don't want the wheels turned away from us. We want them turned towards the camera. It's kind of just like a general rule of thumb with the car photography is that you want that front wheel to be turned and facing the camera. So we'll uh, adjust that real quick. Now, before we continue on here, we're gonna do a little quick sponsor from me. If you guys are into car photography, make sure to check out the Lightroom presets that are linked down below. All of the photos that were taken have been edited with these presets, and I really like using them, and I think you will too. So feel free to check them out down below. Full turn. It's going to scream at us because we left the headlights on, but that's all right. It's okay. So we're shooting wide open, so I guess we'll see how sharp the images are. So wide open aperture. Really pushing it to get wide enough there. I wonder if we can use these. No, kind of looks stupid. Don't want to look stupid. It's pretty close. We're cutting it edge to edge there. Nice. Let's see how well it captures the detail here. Nope, too close. There you go. There's like pigeons everywhere. Just staying high. Hey boys. You enjoying the car? Yeah, nice. Maybe we'll do some straight on shots. We'll maneuver the vehicle to be a bit more straight on. Straight on looks pretty dope. And the way that the sun's kind of cutting across those, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and back off a little bit more. Of course my tripod's in the way. Yeah, it's looking nice. I'm happy with that. For sure. Let's get out of the way again. Now, I mostly do my shooting for Instagram. That's why I'm shooting this way. A bit more on the vertical side. Switch the CPO onto the windshield. Um, yeah, it's a tough call on this one. I'd almost rather cut the door panels off. I guess it gives like a worse reflection than the one on the roof. But I guess we'll try meet in the middle. Here. Go a little wider yet. Now the tripod's not in the way. It's one thing to note about the 85s is you're pretty limited if you want to get the whole car in the frame, you have to be quite a ways back. And that's just the reality of the situation. So, unless you love shooting landscape, in which case, it'd be a bit closer to get the whole car in. Now, this angle is making me want that like carbon fiber duckbill spoiler for this thing. What do you guys think? Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more on here. Whoop, just a touch, nothing aggressive. Let's see if we can grab some interior shots. Well, it's got some light flares maybe, hey? See the sun's coming through there. See if we can put the door in the way. Adds a bit of depth to the photo. So we're gonna switch over to video and see how well the 85 mil handles autofocus, tracking the car, those kind of things. For the first shot, I think we'll just do kind of a the standard front on let's see how well this looks yeah so you can see one thing i noticed with this lens is that there's quite a bit of focus hunting with the lens 
doesn't really lock on super well. And I noticed it a lot when I was shooting my first kind of everything you want to know about the BRZ. I'll try and drop some clips in here, but especially as you're moving towards the vehicle and away from it, it seemed to really have a hard time keeping track. So I think for me, video wise, this isn't my favorite lens. It's not super dependable for video. I think for, for photos, it works super well. Really, really happy with it. I've got kind of mixed thoughts about it, so let's actually hop into the car and I'll go into a little bit more of the details of why I think this is a good lens and maybe why you wouldn't want to get it. So I'm gonna take this silly thing off. Let's hop back into the car and talk about the lens. Okay, so what do I like about this lens? I like that it is lightweight. It's fairly compact on the R5 body. It's pretty nice to manage and kind of feels good in the hand. It does feel quality. I believe that the image quality is definitely up to par for the price that you're paying. I have no worries about that. Um, the quality of the glass is really good. The quality of the construction is really good. One thing to note about it though is that it does not have any weather sealing on the bottom of it. So I do think that this is a good budget lens essentially, but there are some downsides and those downsides for me is that the focus ring is kind of useless if you wanted to do it in manual focus. I think even it kind of pulls the wrong way from what I'm used to at least. So going this way should go out and going this way should come closer and I think it goes backwards. The good news is, is that it has a USB-C connection in here, which means it can get firmware updates. And if you follow these guys on Instagram, they do let you know when updates come out for their lenses. So that's actually a really good thing about it. And especially with the autofocus maybe not being that great for video, hopefully that means that as updates come out, this lens will just kind of keep getting better, which is kind of sweet. Um, for a budget lens, I think that's pretty cool. Now, one of the reasons you might want to look into the Canon's version, they have an 85mm f1.8, um, and it's kind of like the lower end model. It's a little bit more expensive, but it does have, I believe, macro capabilities, meaning you can get a lot closer to objects. Whereas this one, I find the focus distance to be quite far. And if you guys know me on the channel, I'm actually a 35mm shooter, so I tend to enjoy shooting a little bit wider. So 85 for me is a little bit limiting, but if that's the focal length that you like, like Peter McKinnon, for example, he loves this focal length for like the B-roll king. If you've already got a great kit, if you've got a 24 to 70, a 35 mil prime, which you know you want, and maybe the 70 to 200 and you find that you land at 85, then this would be a good option for a budget friendly lens. And I'd say that's kind of who I'd say this is for, is someone that doesn't have a ton of cash to put out, but knows they like an 85 and they want to get that aperture of 1.8 with a little bit of a faster aperture, then yeah, I think it will be good to you and it really actually is a lot of fun to use. Um, for photography specifically, I think this will stay in my kit when I'm looking to get those longer focal lengths. Typically the 70 to 200, for example, is a huge lens and it's a big lens to carry around. So for me, I like it. I'm very happy that Viltrox sent this to me to test out. I think it's a great lens. So I'm hoping they'll actually come out with a 35 mil version that we can test out for the RF as well. It gives me hope that as these guys develop more and more for the RF, that we'll just get more options that are more affordable for us. I hope this isn't blown out. Is this super blown out? Uh. All right, boys, we're gonna get out of here. Now, it's a little sketchy because to get in here, there was like some snow ridge. It's gonna scrape my car a bit. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. Okay. Whew. We're good. We're clear. We're all clear. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor. Hit that like button for me. If you're into cool car content, cameras, or you just want to be a part of a cool community, feel free to subscribe. I really appreciate and value your guys' time, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.